know, a lot of my game plan kind of went dead really, really quickly. But the one thing that it did do, which was very, very productive. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Nightly Wrap-Up Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, just a, a sh little bit shortened of an update. Uh, my daughter has a softball game, so I have to drive her. So, um, so I apologize in advance. So let's let's talk about it. We, we, we talked about the weekend update. Um, very, very important day today. Um, market needed uh, to kind of give a definitive answer of what's about to happen next. Uh, we talked about the 50-day moving average. Whoever's going to have control probably by, by Monday's close, which is today, uh, is probably going to set a tone for the rest of the week. And we, we kind of got it, I mean, very, very quickly. And, you know, you saw a pretty big move pre-market uh, on the NASDAQ 100. You had a lot of names, you know, that we talked about uh, on the weekend video. It just got absolutely destroyed. And the video keeps on going lower. Uh, Amazon, uh, Amazon lost its 50-day uh, moving average. Uh, got hit, you know, pretty, pretty aggressively as well. We talked about Texan on the update. We talked about uh, AMD. All these names, uh, all these names lined up. And again, it doesn't, it's, it's not just isolated to these names. Uh, you know, anything to do uh, with the NASDAQ 100 got hit. You know, we talked about Microsoft. Uh, very, I'm talking about really, really aggressive selling all across the board. But the craziest part about the day, if you're just an outside looking in, you say, well, there's a 2% 2 decline on the NASDAQ 100. It doesn't seem that bad. It's really not, right? It's it's not the point of the percentage, how much is down. It, the point of uh, today's session was to see who is going to be uh, in charge uh, going forward. And I think we got that answer pretty aggressively. The weirdest part about today's session was, and we, we were talking about it on uh, on the on the webinar, it, it didn't feel, right? It didn't feel like it was one of those all day throw the baby out with the bathwater type of scenarios because the problem with, with today's day, intraday, right? Intraday only we're talking about. A lot of these names gapped down so aggressively that they were beyond their average true range. So for example, if um, you know, if Microsoft, for example, has an average true range, let's just say seven, eight dollars, it put that in on the opening print, right? Same, the same thing like an AMD, maybe four or five point AMD range. They put that in, in the open. We saw a lot of names like that. So when you look at the NASDAQ 100, the Qs, and you look at it for the day, and you're like, oh, what's, it's, what's not a, it's not a big deal, right? You're saying to yourself, oh, I went up a little bit, down a little bit, up a little, down a little bit. So if it looked like there was a lot of strength in this morning and kind of towards the end of the day, but you know, in the afternoon, they, they kind of pulled it into the close, you, you wouldn't be wrong, right? You, you definitely wouldn't be wrong. Uh, you saw a lot of disconnect today, okay, which is a, a very common theme when stocks are being defended or stocks are being confirmed, right? You have a lot, a lot of that theme there. Um, you also had a lot of stocks today open up lower, then it went higher. Then you had a lot of stocks today open up lower, kind of drifted lower the whole day. So usually when these things all go, right, they all go in one direction. They're either all going to be strong or they're going to be all weak. And today was for the first four, four and a half hours, maybe five hours of the day, some were strong, some were weak. But when you look at the scoreboard towards the end of the day, you're going to realize the same common denominator that all these stocks are going to have, right? They were building and people were being and people were buying these quote unquote dips. And this is all happening underneath the 50 day moving average, which is not good. And it kept on and, and we kept on reiterating the point today. It, it wasn't one of those days that you turn around because, again, 99 percent of my watch list got absolutely destroyed, literally burned into flames. Like, again, I wasn't shorting uh, NVIDIA down 16 from the pivot. It just wasn't going to happen. So a lot of my you know, a lot of my game plan kind of went dead really, really quickly. But the one thing that it did do, which was very, very productive, is giving me more data points, is giving me more uh, collection of what I believe is going to happen next. And what seemed to be strong names, like for example, Tesla seemed strong today, right? Didn't it seem kind of strong today? 
and then you realized it wasn't strong. It was still down at one point, you know, at the whole day, pretty much 35, 36 points, but you see how tight these channels were. And I can see how a lot of people will deem that as well. That's bullish. They're not taking the stock down, well, yada, yada, yada. They took the stock down uh, right into the close, into the pre-market lows. And you see that with a lot of names over and over and over again. And what I did believe, and I still believe kind of going into tomorrow's session, I do believe the fact that they held up a lot of these names, it's almost like a, a chicken without a head scenario, right? You know, you cut off the chicken's head and the body still runs around for a couple of minutes and then it finally dies. It felt like they were baiting in a lot of late by the dippers, right? And I think that's what's gonna happen tomorrow as well, especially if we get any type of gap up tomorrow, I believe you're gonna have a second round of people buying the dip and then people are gonna realize, well, wait a minute, I'm not buying the dip like I was buying the dip on this run up here above the 50 day moving average. It's gonna to dawn to them after the fact, after they realize that their stock didn't hold, it's gonna it's gonna dawn on them that they, they, they would started to buy stocks underneath the 50 day moving average. And that's obviously uh, not a good thing. Um, I do believe, um, I do believe the NASDAQ 100 still has more room down. Obviously any gap up tomorrow into supply is not gonna be a good thing. Uh, then we can have a potentially green to red scenario on the bottom ranges and all these, but not only do uh, not only do the, the semiconductors, right, continue to lead the way. Like look at look at look at a name like LRCX, which I like for tomorrow, right? LSR, LRCX uh, had a low that it put in on March 14th. It's been kind of going sideways, you know, up and down, up and down. But if it can start clearing out this whole channel here, there's a lot of room down here. Same thing with uh, AMAP, right? A lot of room down as well. But the one group that's you know that's very interesting to me is the financials, right? Namely, the credit card companies. You know, again, you, you'd figure with rising rates and especially another deem of another possible 50 basis points on the next meeting, they would benefit, correct? When you look at when you look at MasterCard, man, look look at MasterCard. It's sitting it's sitting literally three times on the same channel. Look look at the chart. Look at this chart, right? Do a do a mental snapshot of of Microsoft, of of um, Mastercard. Now do a mental snapshot of Microsoft, right? You see how it sat down the same way three times in the bottom of the range? Well, look at MasterCard, guys. If this MasterCard range gets hit tomorrow, you know, there's, a, there's a lot of room down. There's about 10, 12 points down. Same thing with Visa, right? Visa is exactly the same thing. It held the same bottom range here three times as well. So if they're going to start pulling, right, if they start pulling everything, and they start pulling the financials, it, this is obviously going to turn into kind of a global sell scenario instead of like, you know, pick and choose of an industry group that they're coming out of rotating out. So it's something definitely to watch. Uh, everything else, obviously, um, you know, we're sell bias. I get, I got to give I, the one thing that I got to give the credit to today. Um, you know, it's, people are talking about this, like VERU, for example, not something, it's not like my cup of tea is something, but it really does show you how even though the market was going lower, we're building below uh, a pretty big level here, right? It's really still, to, to really does show you the speculation money. It might not come every single day, and this is maybe not my thing, but the speculation money is still there, and you just never know when it's going to kind of wake up, and uh, you know, and, and people are going to start flocking into. Uh, so going into tomorrow's session, obviously, I would prefer uh, any type of gap up into uh, into supply on a lot of these NASDAQ 100 names, obviously a green to red scenario. Uh, opening range low, you know, obviously would work as well. So the bears, they need to continue to build below the 50 day moving average. The bulls need to do whatever they have to do to reclaim today's highs and start moving back to the 50 day. But keep this in mind, the longer we build the base, below the 50 day moving average, the higher probability we're gonna start seeing more lower prices. Guys, God bless. I apologize for cutting this short. Softball time, daddy time. Have a great night, guys, and I will see you all tomorrow.